the damage that exhaust gas from main engines and boilers can do to the environment. In order to protect the environment and safeguard human health, the IMO have introduced a series of reductions in the allowable sulphur content of fuels used by ships. And from 2020, the IMO maximum limit on sulphur fuels is 0.5% by mass outside an emission control area, ECA, and 0.1% by mass inside an ECA. These changes were implemented through MARPOL Annex 6, but this also allows the use of higher sulphur fuels if the ship has an approved exhaust gas cleaning system, EGCS, commonly referred to as a scrubber. This is because scrubbers can remove acidic sulphur oxides, known as SOX, from the exhaust stream. They also remove particulate matter, PM, such as ash. Although sulphur produces energy when burned, it is an unwanted impurity found in many crude oils. Reducing the sulphur content of fuels requires either more processing or blending with distillate fuels, both of which make low sulphur fuels more expensive. So the use of a scrubber enables ships to burn cheaper fuels while still complying with MARPOL Annex 6 requirements. Exhaust gas scrubbers will be familiar to anyone who has worked on a tanker with an inert gas plant that uses exhaust gas. Impurities are removed by spraying water through the gas stream. In the case of scrubbers, the wash water can then be filtered and or treated and either discharged overboard or recirculated. The washing process also has the advantage of removing particulate matter, PM, from the exhaust gas. The simplest type of scrubber is the open loop scrubber. Open loop scrubbers mainly use untreated seawater, which has some natural alkalinity, to wash out and neutralize the sulfur oxides from the exhaust gases. There may be some means of adding chemicals to increase the alkalinity of the wash water. After use, the seawater is discharged overboard, but may have some form of treatment and cleaning before final discharge. The effectiveness of an open loop scrubber depends on the alkalinity of the water that the vessel is operating in. A low alkalinity will adversely affect the performance of the scrubber. Research and opinions are divided about whether the discharge from open loop scrubbers is completely harmless to the marine environment. Some countries have or are considering local regulations that ban or restrict their use. Closed loop scrubbers are used to avoid the discharge of acidic products into the sea. Most use fresh water with the addition of an alkali, usually caustic soda or magnesium oxide, to wash out the sulfur oxides. Since the system is a closed loop, the circulating water needs to be cooled. It also needs to be cleaned. The waste products are separated out and the sludge is collected on board for discharge to shore reception facilities. Any clean effluent can either be stored on board or discharged through monitoring equipment when local regulations allow this. Because the chemicals used in closed loop scrubbers cost money and the resulting waste material needs to be landed ashore, hybrid scrubbers are designed to operate in both open loop and closed loop modes. Closed loop mode is used when local rules forbid the use of open loop scrubbers and open loop mode is used when allowed to save using chemicals and accumulating waste products on board the ship. Dry scrubbers, as the name suggests, do not use liquids. The exhaust gas is cleaned with dry chemicals, typically calcium hydroxide, commonly known as caustic lime. The dry chemical and waste products need to be handled and stored on board, and the waste products need to be discharged to shore reception facilities. They can reduce the sulfur emissions from exhaust gas, whilst at the same time keeping potentially harmful discharges into the sea within set limits. To give a meaningful measure of the amount of sulfur oxides present, the IMO used the emission ratio which is the ratio of sulfur dioxide to carbon dioxide in the exhaust gas by volume. 
These emission ratios are known for fuels of different sulfur content, and the sulfur dioxide and carbon dioxide present in the exhaust stream can be measured. It can therefore be established if the scrubber has reduced the emission ratio of a high sulfur fuel to the equivalent of that of a low sulfur fuel, required for the area where the ship is located. To limit the environmental impact of any scrubber wash water discharges into the sea, the IMO also set limits for pH. The pH should not be less than 6.5 at the ship's discharge. When the ship is maneuvering or in transit, a maximum difference between the wash water inlet and outlet of two pH units is allowed. PAH, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. These are a byproduct of incomplete combustion. Turbidity. Turbidity is a measure of how much material is suspended in the wash water. Nitrates and nitrites. This gives a measure of how much NOx has been removed from the exhaust gas. The IMO require continuous monitoring of wash water pressure and flow rate, exhaust gas pressure before and pressure drop across the scrubber, engine and boiler loads, exhaust temperature before and after the scrubber, exhaust gas sulfur dioxide parts per million and carbon dioxide by percentage. Wash water pH, PAHs, turbidity and temperature. The data collection device should be tamper-proof with read-only data collection and recording. It should be capable of retaining data for 18 months. It's so designed to reduce sulfur oxide discharges from the equivalent of a 3.5% sulfur fuel to that of a 0.1% sulfur fuel. For open-loop scrubbers, this would be when using seawater with an alkalinity of about 2,300 micromole per litre. This covers the North Sea area excluding the Baltic Sea, where the seawater's low alkalinity may reduce efficiency. Scrubbers must have an exhaust gas cleaning system, EGCS, technical manual, ETM, and there are two ways by which they are certified. Scheme A certified by the manufacturer, known as ETM-A, based on initial emission performance unit certification, together with a continuous check of operating parameters and daily exhaust emission monitoring. Scheme B, based on continuous exhaust emission monitoring, together with a daily check of operating parameters. In general, if there is any failure of the scrubber that cannot be repaired within one hour, the plant should be changed over to a low sulfur fuel, which ensures compliance with local regulations. Work by neutralizing the acidic products of combustion by bringing the exhaust gas into contact with an alkali. The IMO use the emission ratio, which is the ratio of sulfur dioxide to carbon dioxide in the exhaust gas by volume, as a measure of the amount of sulfur products in the exhaust gas. Exhaust and wash water discharges need to be monitored and data needs to be retained for 18 months following safety hazards for scrubbers. Handling and proximity of exhaust gases. Position of permanent access platforms and sampling locations. Storage and use of pressurized containers of pure and calibration gases and hazards associated with the handling of caustic materials. Scrubbers has only developed recently, it is important to consider the hazards that they might present. Treat the scrubber and exhaust trunking as enclosed spaces and use risk assessment and a permit to work. And always check the safety data sheets for scrubber chemicals and wear the correct personal protective equipment. If ventilation is insufficient, respiratory protection must be used.